Dear friends, I am Dr. K. Kannan, Professor of Mechanical Engineering, Anjaliyamal Mahalingam Engineering College, Koyil Venni. I am happy to meet you again in the video lecture on the subject Fluid Mechanics and Machines. And this is lecture number 6.1, 6th chapter, 1st lecture. So, we are going to discuss about the viscous fluid flow or laminar fluid flow. And in the viscous fluid flow, we are going to deal with the flow of viscous fluid. Uh, normally, the flow of viscous fluid will be laminar flow and we will define what is Reynolds number, what is the condition for laminar flow and we will discuss the laminar flow through the circular pipe and laminar flow between parallel plane. We recap from the earlier lecture. So, in the earlier lecture, we discussed the di fluid dynamics. We derived the Euler's equation of motion, Bernoulli's equation or the energy equation and the momentum equation. The learning outcome for this lecture, at the end of the lecture, the student will be able to derive the hagen poisley equation, uh, which is the equation uh, for calculating the head loss in the pipeline and derive the loss of head in the viscous flow through the parallel plane. Viscous fluid flow or laminar flow. So, the flow of viscous fluid is normally laminar. The viscous fluid flow with low velocity so that the force due to the viscosity is predominant the over the inertia force. So, there are two forces when the fluid is flowing through the pipeline or uh, open channel. The one, one force is force due to the inertia of the fluid and uh, Another force is due to the viscosity. The relation between these two forces, it is given by Reynolds number. So, the Reynolds number is defined as ratio of inertia force to the viscous force and the inertia force is mass into acceleration and the viscous force is shear stress into area. So, mass into acceleration over shear stress into area, substitute for mass rho into A into acceleration V square divided by shear stress is mu into V by L into area is A. So, simplifying, so the Reynolds number is rho V L divided by mu or V L by nu. So, where the parameter rho is the density, mu is the dynamic viscosity, nu is the kinematic viscosity, V is the velocity and L is the length of the pipe. And this is the Reynolds number for uh, the geometry, the object with the linear dimension, length along the length of the fluid flow. But when they, when the, when there is fluid flow through the circular pipe, then we have to use instead of L, we have to use the diameter of the pipe. So Reynolds number is the criteria for classifying the flow, whether the flow is laminar or turbulent. So in the beginning. We studied, we classified the flow, one flow is laminar, another type of flow is turbulent flow. The laminar flow or turbulent flow, they are classified based on the Reynolds number. So, fluid, fluid with the flow with the lower Reynolds number is called as laminar flow. The flow with the higher Reynolds number is called as turbulent flow. And the flow of viscous fluid through the circular pipe. So, the for circular pipe, flow through the circular pipe, the pipe will, the, the flow through the circular pipe will be laminar or viscous if the Reynolds number is less than 2300. So, for circular pipe, the Reynolds number is given by Re equal to rho Vd by mu or Re equal to Vd by nu. So, V is the velocity of the fluid, average velocity of the fluid and D is the diameter of the pipe and nu is the kinematic viscosity. So, Remember the Reynolds equation. So, frequently we will be using the Reynolds equation for solving problem, not only in fluid mechanics, in even in the, the heat transfer in the higher semester. Consider a horizontal pipe of radius R, capital R, from the center uh, through which the fluid is flowing. Consider the fluid element of at a radius R sliding in cylindrical fluid element of radius r plus dr. The length of the fluid element is delta x, the forces acting on the fluid element are, it is shown here. So, the we consider the small fluid element of radius r. So, from the center we are measuring the radius r and the thickness dr. The length of the fluid element is delta x. So, the length is shown here as delta x. 
the forces acting on the on the fluid element so force acting on the left side the phase ab is p into pi r square so p is the pressure pressure and pi r square is the area cross section area p into pi r square is the pressure force acting on the left side on the phase ab similarly on the other side again the pressure pressure equal to p plus dou p by dou x into delta x into pi r square is the pressure force acting on the right side and the force due to the shear stress is acting on the surface of the cylindrical fluid element so the force due to the surface stress is shear stress equal to tau into 2 pi r into delta x so we write the equation terms the the force terms the pressure force on the phase ab equal to p into pi r square the pressure force on the phase cd equal to p plus dou p by dou x delta x into pi r square and the shear force on the surface of the fluid element acting on circumference it is as acting shear stress tau into 2 pi r into delta x now the sum of the forces in the direction of the flow is equal to zero sum of all the forces in the direction of flow is equal to zero we add so p into pi r square minus p into dou p by dou x into delta x into pi r square minus shear stress shear stress is acting in the opposite direction of the flow flow direction and the force on the cd uh, right side phase is also acting in the opposite direction to the fluid flow then we expand the so the first term as it is second term we expand so second term p pi r square into minus uh, dou p by dou x delta x into pi r square minus the last term tau into 2 pi r into delta x now the first two terms are cancel each other because they are opposite direction so p pi r square minus p pi r square become zero so finally what is left out minus dou p by dou x delta x pi r square minus tau into 2 pi r delta x equal to zero we take the tau into 2 pi r to the other side so minus dou p by dou x into delta x into pi r square equal to tau into 2 pi r into delta x now look at the equation both left side and right side delta x is getting cancelled pi is getting cancelled one r is getting cancelled so what is left out in the left hand side minus dou p by dou x into r on the other side it is 2 tau so the shear stress tau equal to minus dou p by dou x into r by 2 so the final conclusion is shear stress equal to minus dou p by dou x into r into r by 2 where dou p by dou x is the pressure gradient for constant value of the pressure gra gradient in the x direction so dou p by dou x is constant the shear stress tau across a section varies with radius so shear stress varying with only radius so considering dou p by dou x equal to constant and uh, the shear stress distribution and velocity distribution in the circular pipe so look at the diagram so this is the first diagram is the first line it is shear stress distribution and the second one is velocity distribution look at the we discussed the uh, diagram so shear stress at the center of the pipeline equal to zero and when you move in the towards the outer radius towards the surface surface of the cylinder the shear stress value is increasing and you may find the maximum shear stress on the wall so the effect of viscosity is shear stress is more on the surface of the pipe and it is decreasing towards the center at the pipe center it becomes zero so the velocity profile so look at the velocity distribution so this shows how the velocity is increasing uh, yeah, across the cross section of the pipeline and similarly the shear stress distribution shows the how the shear stress is varying from the center to the outer surface of the pipe so for velocity distribution so velocity here at the surface of the pipe equal to zero so the fluid adjacent to the metal surface it is sticking on to the surface it is it is not moving so when you move towards the center the velocity is gradually increasing and at the center the velocity is maximum so velocity distribution it is parabolic in shape so at the at the center the velocity is maximum and at the wall the velocity is zero and it will have you will have a parabolic profile for velocity distribution in the circular pipe and we will see the equation for velocity distribution the css distribution and we will derive the equation for uh, css distribution the velocity distribution so velocity distribution in the pipe for circular pipe the value of css is given by 
tau equal to mu into dy du by dy. So, from the Newton's law of viscosity and where here y is measured from the pipe wall. So, from here we are measuring. So, y equal to capital R minus small r. So, capital R is the outer radius, small r is the any radius. So, differentiating dy equal to minus dr. So, CSS equal to minus mu into du by dr for the circular cross section. So, CSS tau equal to minus du by dr, u is the velocity. And substituting the equation 1 in here in this equation, so we will get minus mu into du by dr equal to minus dou p by dou x into r by 2. So, the minus sign is getting cancelled. So, mu is taken to the other side. So, du by dr equal to 1 by 2 mu. 2 mu into dou p by dou x into r. So, on the right hand side dou p by dou x is constant, mu is constant. So, the only variable is r. So, now we have to integrate. So, integrating the equation with respect to r. So, we will get u equal to 1 by 4 mu dou p by dou x r square plus c. So, here we have a constant uh, of integration. We have to find out the value of the constant from the boundary condition. So, what is the boundary condition? At uh, r equal to capital R, velocity equal to 0, velocity u equal to 0. What is r equal to capital R? On the pipe surface, the fluid is not moving, it is not, it is sticking to the surface. So, r equal to 0. So, substituting u equal to 0, r equal to r, capital U equal to 0. So, 0 equal to 1 by 4 mu dou p by dou x into r square plus c. So, c equal to minus 1 by 4 mu dou p by dou x r square. Now, you substitute the c value in the second equation, we will get the velocity distribution. So, the velocity distribution becomes 1 by 4 mu dou p by dou x r square minus 1 by 4 mu dou p by dou x capital R square. So, taking the r square as a common, so you can combine the equations u equal to minus of 1 by 4 mu dou p by dou x into capital R square minus small r square. So, this is the, if this equation gives the velocity distribution. So, that is the, the value of, the, the for constant value of dou p by dou x mu and r, the velocity distribution varies with the square of r, square of small r. So, the equation 3 is is equation of the parabola. So, the velocity distribution is in the pipe is parabolic. So, this equation is the equation for drawing the velocity profile in the pipeline. So, this is varying with respect to square of the radius. So, it becomes the parabolic shape. So, the maximum from here we calculate the maximum velocity. So, maximum velocity of the flow will be at the center where r equal to 0. So, in this equation you substitute r equal to 0 will get the maximum velocity. So, maximum velocity equal to 1 by 4 mu into dou p by dou x into r square and we calculate the average velocity. So, average velocity uh, we calculate. So, d q we calculate the flow discharge through the small elemental uh, ring fluid ring the discharge of the circular ring of radius r and thickness d r. So, d q equal to velocity at r into area of the elemental ring of thickness d r. So, velocity equal to, so substituting u into 2 pi r into dr. So, 2 pi r into dr is the area, u is the velocity of the fluid. So, substituting for u from the previous equation, one minus 1 by 4 mu dou p by dou x into capital R square minus small r square into 2 pi r into dr. So, when you integrate the equation, we will get the discharge. So, when you integrating integrating from 0 to r from the center of the pipe to the outer radius d q equal to integrate 0 to r minus 1 by 4 mu dou p by dou x into r square minus small r square into 2 pi r into dr. So, left hand side becomes q and right hand side these are all constant 1 minus 1 by 4 mu dou p by dou x and 2 pi are con 2 pi are constant and integrating r square capital r square minus small r square into r dr. So, integrating and substituting limit here. So, discharge equal to minus e pi by 8 mu into dou p by dou x into r to the power 4. Now, the average velocity equal to u bar. u bar is the average velocity. So, q discharge divided by the area. 
So, discharge we have calculated from the previous equation. So, discharge equal to minus pi by 8 mu dou p by dou x r to the power 4 area equal to pi r square. So, pi into capital R square it is the outer radius r capital R equal to outer radius. So, simplifying average velocity equal to minus 1 by 8 mu into dou p by dou x into r square. And we find the ratio of maximum velocity to the average velocity. So, u max by u bar equal to 2. So, substituting u max equal to 1 by 4 mu dou p by dou x into r square and substituting for u bar minus 1 by 8 mu dou p by dou x into r square. So, simplifying it is equal to 2 and this number you have to remember and this average velocity equation you have to remember to for solving the problem. And the pressure drop in the pipeline. So, when the fluid is flowing through the pipeline, so what is the uh, how to calculate the pressure drop. So, the, this calculation is very important uh, for designing the uh, motor or the pump for the uh, for pushing the fluid. So, the the pump the power required to push the fluid to make the fluid to flow depends on the pressure drop in the pipeline. So, to calculate the pressure drop we are going to use the average velocity equation of average velocity. So, the average velocity is given by uh, u bar equal to minus 1 by 8 mu dou p by dou x into r square. So, from this equation rearranging dou p by dou x equal to minus 8 mu u bar by r square. Now, we consider the pipeline. So, where we have section 1 and section 2, we, we calculate the pressure drop between the two sections. So, at the section 1 the pressure is P1 and section 2 is the pressure is P2 and the length between P1 and P2 is L. Now, so the integrating this equation, so rearranging and integrating, so dp integral dp from 1 to 2 minus 1 8 mu uh, 8 mu u bar by r square into integral dx from 1 to 2. So, the integrating left side is p2 minus p1 and right side minus 8 mu u, u bar divided by r square into x2 minus x1. So, x2 minus x1 equal to L. So, minus 8 mu u bar L divided by r square. Now, instead of p2 by p1 to drop the negative sign, instead of p2 minus p1, we take p1 minus p2. So, p1 minus p2 is the pressure drop in the direction of the flow. So, it is equal to 8 mu u bar L divided by r square and uh, we arrange p1 by p2 equal to in, in terms of diameter. So, radius equal to diameter divided by 2. So, this becomes 32 into mu u bar L divided by d square. So, pressure drop between two station, two points in terms of diameter equal to uh, 32 mu into u bar L. U bar is the average velocity. L is the length between the section 1 and 2 and D is the diameter of the pipe. And this equation, so the loss of head due to friction, the loss of head in the direction of the flow, hf equal to p1 minus p2 divided by rho g. So, substituting the p1 minus p2 from the previous equation, so 32 mu u bar l divided by rho g d square. And this equation is called as hagen poisley equation, so which is used to calculate the loss of pressure head in the flow through the pipeline. And this equation is important for calculating head loss uh, in the pipeline and which is the basic for calculating the pumping power uh, of the uh, fluid flow, fluid mechanics or the design of the pump we have to calculate the head loss due to the uh, head loss in the direction of the flow. And the here we find that the head loss, the loss of pressure head depends on the dynamic viscosity, density average velocity, length of the pipe and diameter of the pipe. So, lower the density, the loss of friction, I mean loss of uh, head will be lesser, right. So, uh, the uh, absolute viscosity should be lower, density should be higher. So, the loss of pressure will be less. So, next we are going to discuss about the flow of viscous fluid between two parallel plates. So, the earlier discussion is completely for flow through the circular pipeline, Visc flow of viscous fluid through the circular pipe. Uh, here it is between two parallel plates of uh, a gap T. So, T is the gap between the two fluid, two plates. 
so here the fluid is entering and flowing through the flowing between the parallel plates now we consider a fluid element of thickness delta x and delta y so delta x is the thickness in the x direction delta y is the thickness in the y direction and delta z is the thickness in the z direction which is perpendicular to the uh, screen now the various forces acting on the fluid element first the pressure force on the left side surface so p into delta y into delta z so the p is the pressure and delta y into delta z is the area of the phase ab so the force acting here is p into delta y into delta z and similarly the force acting on the other side of the surface the pressure force acting on the other side equal to p plus do p by do x into delta x into delta y delta z then the shear stress the force due to the shear stress acting on the bottom surface bc so shear stress into delta x into delta z so delta x into delta z is the area of the surface bc and similarly at the top surface shear stress tau into do tau by do y into delta y into delta x delta y now the pressure force acting on the surface ab equal to p into delta y delta z the pressure force acting on the phase cd equal to p plus do p by do x into delta x into delta y delta z and the shear force acting on the phase bc equal to shear stress tau into delta x delta z and the shear force acting on the phase ad equal to tau into do tau by do y delta y into delta x delta z now we know that for steady and uniform flow the sum of the forces in the direction of the flow equal to zero we have to add all the forces so sum of the forces pressure force and the force due to the shear stress so p plus p into delta y delta z minus uh, p plus do p by do x and delta x into delta y delta z so the second term is op acting on the opposite direction and the force on the bottom is acting on the opposite direction tau in minus tau into delta x delta z uh, plus tau into do tau by do y delta y into delta x delta z now we expand we expand the term so the p into delta y delta z minus p into delta y delta l z minus do p by do x into delta x into delta y delta z minus shear stress tau into delta x delta y delta z plus tau into delta x delta z plus do tau by do y delta y into delta x delta z equal to zero the first two terms are getting cancelled and the third and fourth term fourth and fifth term is also getting cancelled so finally the left out terms are minus do p by do x delta x delta y delta z plus do tau by do y into delta x delta y delta z equal to zero and here again delta x delta y delta z is getting cancelled so rearranging do p by do x equal to do tau by do y so the pressure gradient equal to do tau by do y so the velocity well, uh, shear stress with respect to uh, the do tau do by do y so the variation of shear stress with respect to the y direction so substituting the value of shear stress from the newton's law viscosity from the in the equation 1 so we already know tau equal to mu into do u by do y now you substitute so do u by do y into mu into do u by do y equal to do p by do x so do square u by do y square equal to 1 by mu do p by do x so this is the equation now you have to integrate and find out the velocity so first integration integrating above equation with respect to y so du by dy equal to 1 by mu do p by do x into y plus c1 integrating again so u equal to 1 by mu do p by do x uh, y y square by 2 plus c1y plus c2 that is the second equation now there are two constant c1 and c2 uh, we require two boundary conditions to calculate the c1 and c2 so look at the c1 c2 are the constant of integration the value of c1 and c2 are obtained by using the boundary condition so the both the plates are fixed plates at y equal to 0 u equal to 0 at y equal to t again u equal to 0 so both the plates are fixed plates so the fluid is not moving which is sticking onto the two plates now using the boundary conditions so we have c1 equal to minus 1 by 2 mu do p by do x into t and c2 equal to 0 so substituting in the equation we'll get velocity distribution u equal to 1 by mu do p by do x y square by 2 plus and minus 1 by 2 mu substituting for c1 minus 1 by 2 mu do p by do x into t into y plus 0 
and rearranging the terms, combining the first and second term on the right hand side, u equal to minus 1 by 2 mu dou p by dou x into ty minus y square. So, this is the velocity distribution equation. Now, we can find out the velocity for different values of y. So, calculating velocity and uh, the CSS distribution, similarly the CSS distribution tau equal to mu into dou u by dou y. So, substituting the value of velocity distribution from the equation 3. So, C S test equal to mu into dou u, dou by dou y of u equal to 1 minus 1 by 2 mu dou p by dou x into t y minus y square and this is mu into minus 1 by 2 mu dou p by dou x t into uh, t minus 2 y and uh, rearranging C S test equal to uh, minus 1 by 2 dou p by dou x into t minus 2 y this is the equation number 4. Now, we have two equations. So, this equation gives the C S test equation and the previous equation, this equation, equation number 3 is gives the velocity distribution equation. Now, we plot the two equations in the diagram. So, the plot will be like this. So, this is the plot. So, how the velocity is varying and how the C S test is varying. So, C S test is maximum on the surface. So, when uh, in the index, in the equation 4, uh, equation 4, T and dou p by dou x are constant, hence the CSS tau varies linearly with uh, uh, distance y. The CSS will be 0 at y equal to t by 2 and the center, the center line between the two plates and the CSS will be maximum at y equal to 0 given by tau o equal to 1 by 2 minus 1 by 2 dou p by dou x into t. So, t is the gap between the two plates. And this, this is actually A, diagram A is the velocity distribution and diagram B is the CSS distribution uh, in the flow between two parallel plates and maximum velocity we have to calculate maximum velocity will occur only at uh, y equal to t by 2 so substituting in the equation u maximum equal to minus 1 by 2 mu dou p by dou x into t into t by 2 minus t by 2 whole square and uh, simplifying u max equal to minus 1 by 2 mu dou p by dou x t square by 2 minus t square by 4 equal to 1 by 2 mu dou p by dou x into t square by 4. So, this is finally u max equal to minus 1 by 8 mu dou p by dou x into t square. So, this is the maximum velocity which is occurring at the center plane, center plane between the two plates. And the average velocity we have to calculate. So, average velocity is obtained by dividing the discharge by the cross sectional area of the flow passage. The discharge through the fluid element of thickness dy and the unit depth is given by velocity in the at a distance y in the area of the strip. So, minus 1 by 2 mu dou p by dou x t y minus y square into delta y into 1 and uh, calculating integrating q equal to q equal to integral minus 1 by 2 mu dou p by dou x t y minus y square into dy. So, substituting and sub, uh, integrating and substituting limit minus 1 by 2 mu dou p by dou x t q by 2 minus d t q by 3 is equal to minus 1 by 2 mu dou p dou p by dou x into t to the power 6 divided by t to the power 3 divided by 6 which is minus 1 by 12 mu dou p by dou x into t to the power 3. So, the discharge equal to minus 1 by 12 mu dou p by dou x into t to the power 3. Now, we calculate the average velocity, average velocity equal to q divided by area minus 1 by 12 mu dou p by dou x into t to the power 3, area equal to thickness between the gap between the two plus t into 1 equal to minus 1 by 12 mu dou p by dou x into t square, that is the average velocity. And the ratio of average velocity to the maximum velocity, so maximum velocity divided by average velocity, so substituting value for the maximum velocity and the average velocity simplifying, this will become 12 by 8 or 3 by 2. Whereas for the circular cross section, it is 2. Now for the parallel plate, flow between parallel plate, it is 1 by uh, 1, 1.5 or 3 by 2. Then the pressure drop between the two points in the flow through the flow between the parallel plate. So, pressure drop from the previous equation dou p by dou x equal to minus 12 mu u bar divided by t square. So, integrating this equation between the two points 1 and 2. So, point 1 at section 1 the pressure is p1 at section 2 the pressure is p2 integrating p2 minus p1 equal to minus 12 mu u bar t square into x2 minus x1 and x2 minus x1 equal to the length between the section. So, p1 minus p2 change in the direction p1 minus p2 equal to 12 mu u bar by t square into L. So, T is the gap between the two plates, L is the length between the station 1 and station 2, mu is the 
dynamic viscosity or absolute viscosity and u bar is the average velocity. And the pressure, uh, the drop in pressure head uh, is given by HF equal to P1 minus P2 divided by rho g, so which is 12 mu u bar L divided by rho g T square. And we define the kinetic energy correction factor, so alpha equal to kinetic energy per uh, second based on the axial velocity divided by kinetic energy per second based on the average velocity and one more parameter momentum correction factor. So, beta equal to momentum per second based on the axial velocity divided by momentum per second based on the average velocity. So, these two parameters uh, you just remember. So, later stage will be using. So, we stop here. So, these are all the books I published in the various mechanical engineering subject. So, here you may find fluid mechanics in machinery uh, which will be useful for you. Uh, for further reading in the subject and to get the more information and the problems in the viscous fluid flow. And I have a YouTube channel where I upload the video lectures on the subjects mentioned here, also the video lectures of the solution for the gate question paper. So, you please subscribe the channel and use the video for your better learning and pass in the gate examination. So, thank you for watching. So, you please post your comments on the YouTube comments box. Subscribe the channel for updation of the videos to your uh, personal uh, YouTube channel and uh, you can contact me through my mail ID or WhatsApp number for any clarification. So, we will continue the viscous fluid flow in the next lecture.